here. Uh, there's a few announcements this morning. First is I wanted to thank Charles Klutz who helped put this service together. Uh, thank you, Charles. I've enjoyed working with you this week. Good morning, good morning. Um, talk about the thousand item challenge. Uh, this is what we have right now. Uh, I know everybody's got a large supply at home that they just hadn't brought yet. So usually I get a little worried, but I know at the end you guys come through. So uh, if we can gather up those items by the end of July, then we'll have a thousand items we can take down to CCM. Um, we Nothing happens in this church without you helping. Uh, I don't know if everybody in here is on a committee. Uh, I'm not going to ask you if you are or you're not. Uh, we just had new assignments with session uh, last Monday night. Um, I'm back on mission through the end of December. So I'm looking for committee members, somebody that can help. I couldn't do this by myself. Um, Melissa is going to be on there with me, um, but we could use a few others to help, you know, make some decisions to do some new things. You know, we, we, we do our PCA, uh, P, PCUSA offerings regularly. We have blood drives, Suds of Love, the Thousand Item Drive, the Community Garden, the Easter and Christmas food drives. Now, we're, we're not doing the mobile food pantry this year. We haven't done mission trips in quite a while. And I hear that we have a lot of experience with mission trips. If anybody's interested in doing that, you know, if, if you want to just talk to me or talk to the preacher, we can try to line some of that up. There's all kinds of possibilities. Uh, we used to do a teacher supply drive. Uh, we used to do C-Van paper and cleaning supplies. Uh, there, there's so much that we could do, but I don't want to overwhelm you. You know, we are sort of a small group, but we've grown. Uh, if it hadn't been for vacation, I think we'd have more here today. So if, if you're not on a committee and you feel a burning desire to help out, we sure could use you. Uh, but uh, just put that in your ear. Thank you, Chris. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we ask that we might center in, that you might prepare our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Christ's name, amen. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, buddy. Can I tell you about my Jesus? Tomorrow. Please stand for the call to worship. God has been acting in our lives and in the world around us this past week. God is here even now, ready to strengthen us and to urge us to greater faithfulness. Amen. Please remain standing and let us sing, Ye servants of God, your master proclaim.
ceases to remove our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. Therefore, in boldness, let us come before God, confessing our sin, first using the prayer of confession that's on the screen, and then having a time of silence. Let us pray together. O oh God, we come to you as little children who both honor and fear their parents. You are like a mother and father to us, so we come to you with both trust and anxiety. It has been so easy to choose the path of our own indulgence instead of the way of sacrifice. We like to feel comfortable and secure rather than risking the disfavor of others or the consequences of standing up against wrong. Forgive us, God, for being so unsure of you and of our own best selves. Grant us courage to follow the truth you reveal to us. Amen. Hear the good news. God has forgiven each one of us and calls us to take our parts in the drama of redeeming love. You may be seated. Hi. Oh, it's right over there, Evie. Do you see it? You can put the money in. Guy, come on. Right over there. There it is. I'm right here. All right. How are you? Everybody doing okay? Y'all are quiet this morning. Do you know the Bible says a lot about sheep? They call Jesus the good shepherd. Why do they have a lot of 
Yes, today I'm talking about sheep. That's right. In the Bible, there's a story of lost sheep. And Evie, you've already spotted, there are some sheep that are lost right now. If you would like to go and find a sheep, get it and bring it back. Only get one, though. I don't... Just one. You guys got to get that one first. You got that one, okay. All right, come on back. There are two more sheep. Garrett and Lucy and Cyrus... Go back that way and look for the sheep. The rest of us, you may, the rest of you, if you have a sheep, you can sit down. Lucy, they're back there by the pews. Yeah. Everett, go look. There's some sheep back there. Yes, you have a little one. Keep looking. There are some that are lost. There's some that are lost. I'll give you a hint. They're down low. They are not up high. They are down low. <laughs> I think you're too far back, although one of you may not be. I don't know. Keep looking. Now, Guy, if you find it, come tell some of the others and let them get it. Oh, good. God gave it to Everett. All right, there's one more she lost sheep out there. One more. I know, it's just one. Cyrus, I think it's up this way, a little bit more. Down that way. Look, look. Down low. You might have to go on the other side of the sanctuary to find it. Boy, this is hard. I didn't realize I was, I was hiding it so hard. I'm glad you found one of our lost sheep. I like the little bow tie on it. Um, does that mean we have to leave it? Eventually, yes, because I'll need it back. But you can play with it for right now. Okay, did we find it? Cyrus, you're really hot. You're getting close. You are the mom. Mama. Did you find it? Mama. Mama. Not yet? Okay, well, we can do the rest of it. We will just ha have to get that sheep in a minute. Come on back. Let's talk about these lost sheep. Oh, you found it. Oh, good, he found it. Yay! All right. Okay, so I want to talk about, just like, I want to talk about these sheep. Jesus says he knows his sheep by name. So that means he knows us. And we know Jesus, don't we? But we are lucky enough to grow up in a church family and with parents who teach us all about Jesus and God's love. But you know there are lots of sheep out there who don't know about Jesus. Did you know that? There are lots of people out there who do not know about Jesus. And Jesus is looking for those lost sheep. He wants us to find them. And one of the ways we can help do that is by telling others about Jesus and about God's love. When we do that, we're helping Jesus find his lost sheep. Thank you for helping me find these sheep today. Now, if you would like to take them during worship, you may. But I need them back before you go home. Is that okay? Yes. Bring it back to me before you go home. But you may play with it during, during uh, children's church or at the nursery. Okay? Or at, in the in the pew. Will you pray with me? Dear God, Dear God we thank you that we know about Jesus. Thank you that we know about Jesus. And Jesus' love for us. And Jesus' love for us. 
We ask that we might have the courage to tell others about you. Help us to find the lost sheep. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Do you want to keep it for a while? Oh, you want to give it back or you want to keep it? Okay. Let's bow our heads for the prayer of illumination. We praise you this morning, O God, our beloved Father. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit to illuminate your blessed world to our hearts and minds this morning. Let that light be our path and guide our hearts and minds as we worship and continue to shine in our lives throughout the coming week. We pray this in the name and for the sake of Jesus the Christ, 
our risen Lord and only Savior. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Psalms 105, verses 1 through 6, and it's from the message. Hallelujah. Listen now for the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Pray to him by name. Tell everyone you meet what he has done. Sing him songs, belt out hymns, translate his wonders into music. Honor his holy name with hallelujahs. You will seek God, live a happy life. Keep your eyes open for God, watch for his works, be alert for signs of his presence. Remember the word, world of wonders he has made, his miracles and the verdicts he has rendered. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O child of Jacob, his chosen. Our New Testament lesson is from 1 Peter, reading from chapter 3. Listen for God's word. I'm reading from the message. If with heart and soul you're doing good, do you think you can be stopped? Even if you suffer for it, you're still better off. Don't give the opposition a second thought. Through thick and thin, keep your hearts at attention and adoration before Christ your master. Be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are, and always with the utmost courtesy. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, I ask that you would pour out your spirit upon us. That you would open our hearts and our minds. Show us how you can use us and inspire us. In Christ's name, amen. About a month ago, I preached on evangelism, emphasizing that we are the ones called to tell the whole message about this life. Those were the angels' exact words to the apostles who were in prison. The angel comes during the night after they had been arrested and opens the prison doors. The angels bring them out of jail and says to them, Go, stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. We are called to tell. We spoke of the things that we're called to say last time. A little reminder is, that this life is not all there is. Through Christ, we have been given the gift of eternal life. That we are all God's children, and that no matter what happens to us in this life, we are not alone, because God is with us. That no matter how good we are, we cannot make ourselves right with God. Righteousness is a gift from Jesus Christ. We must recognize our own sinfulness and accept that God became one of us in the person of Jesus. That Jesus was crucified and that death could not hold him. He is risen from the dead and is alive with us today through the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is our responsibility to tell. It is our duty to tell. It is our calling to tell. Hey, can I tell you about my Jesus? Mara. Hey, you there. Hey, buddy. Can I tell you about my Jesus? You, do, you, do you know for sure if you died on the way home that you'd go to heaven? 
What's it to you? You know, you know, the Bible says that you're a sinner, that you must repent. What are you, some sort of Jesus freak? Hey, he says nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. Hey, ma'am, you there. Can, can I tell you about my Jesus? Won't take but a minute. Just, 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 just give me just a few minutes. Just, just a few minutes. Look here. Look here. I want to show you something really cool and neat. It, it, it bless your heart. Watch this. Watch this. All right. I'm going to draw a picture of you right here. Here's a picture of you right there. Hey, like that. That looks like you, doesn't it? And I put some brown down here because uh, I know you ain't got wings. And uh, God. I'm going to put God over here. need to get to God, but the only way to get to God is no way. So, so, so you know what he did? He, he, he sent his son to sacrifice his life for us and made a way to die on the cross. And that made us a bridge or made us accept God. Isn't that cool? So neat, so simple. Good news. <laughs> Have a good day, man. taking the time to do that. All right. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. You got a minute? Ask, can I share Jesus with you? I have a minute. We'll, we'll I'm busy. Seconds. I don't have time for some sidewalk Jesus. preacher named Goofy Boy, wasting my time. I'm trying to close a deal. And you're wasting my time. You move out of the way and let me go on with the day, okay? Thank you. Hey, you there. Hey, can, can, I, can I share Jesus with you? Just, just a second, man. Yeah, sure. I, I, I don't have time for it, but you don't have time. Yeah, but he kind, had of, time kind of busy. He had, he had time for me, but it's always something with you guys. Do you, do you go to church? No, I don't go to church. Don't I don't have time church. for that, man. You I'm, know I'm, Jesus? Man, I'm a good person. You I, I spend time. I, I'm nice to people. I, I don't do things wrong. You know, I go. To, okay. I, I do what I can. You know. Okay. Do I read my Bible? Have, have, have a good once in a while. Have a good day, sir. I'm kind of busy. I'm on my way to work. I know. Everybody's busy. <laughs> Time to turn off your phone. <laughs> hey, ma'am. Hey, you there. Hey, pretty lady. Hey, hey, hey. Can I share Jesus with you? No, I read, I study, I already know everything I need to know. So I, I don't have you time. sure? I can't. See. It won't take but a minute. No, nope. don't have time. Don't want to, you know, don't go to church because I've already studied all that stuff. You, you know it all. all okay. And, so I'm good. All right. Well, have a good day. Hey, 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 you there. Can I tell you about my Jesus? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Hey, ma'am, excuse me. You, you got a minute? Can, can I tell you about my Jesus? Won't, won't, take, sure. won't take 15 seconds. Okay. Sure. See, this man named Jesus, he walked this earth some 2,000 plus years ago. He predicted his death and he predicted his resurrection no and way. he pulled it off. No way. Yes, yes way. And and there were some eyewitnesses that documented this account. People saw that? Yeah, I bet you know some of them. Let's see, there was um, Matthew, John, and Peter, and James. They're the real people. I, I knew you knew some of them. See, they documented it. Wow. And, 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 and the cool thing is, it's free. Oh, no. All you've got to do is Seriously? believe it and receive it. I can't believe it. Really? Awesome. That's right. That's day. amazing. Have Thank you. Day. presented Jesus to the world some 2,000 years ago. He presented him as good news. I'll get control in a minute. You see, remember the story when the, when the angels came to Mary and the angels said, fear not, for behold we bring you good news. And there was these shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their sheep. And when the angels came to them, they said, behold we bring you good news. You see, I'm going to put it like this. 
I got good news. If I said to you, I got good news in this hand and I got bad news in this hand, which hand would you like for me to share with you? You're smart people. You want the good news. That's right. That's right. Jesus was good news and he still is good news. So share him. Don't wait on your pastor. Don't wait on somebody else to share him. Yes, they can share Jesus, but they can't share what he's done for you and your story. So don't let this be the greatest story you never shared. Amen. You can certainly witness the way these skits illustrate. And sometimes you will feel someone listened. And other times you may feel that Jesus and you were rejected. Our job, as Charles and I talked about, is to plant seeds. We may not know the outcome. We may not know if the seed was really planted. But we have to trust the Holy Spirit to bring about the nourishment for the seed, the light, the water, the nutrients. If we wait until tomorrow. Did y'all hear a guy? He kept saying, tomorrow. Tomorrow, if we wait to share until tomorrow, we may never share. Tomorrow may never come. Now, there are other ways to tell. It can be more conversational with just a phrase. In fact, what I'd like you to do, most of you are supposed to have pens or pencils. If you need a pen or pencil right now, raise your hand. Guy, you'll pass them out if somebody needs a pen or a pencil. Uh, okay, we need one up here. Two up here. Come on up. Guy's going to bring it to you. Right here and right here. Okay, get your bulletin because this is a writing exercise. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a phrase and I want you to finish the sentence, okay? Finish the sentence. And the reason I'm doing this is that these can be conversation starters in addition to let me tell you about my Jesus. Number one, you know, my faith got me through when, finish that, write it down for yourself. My faith got me through when, Okay, number two. This is a different phrase. Again, I want you to finish the sentence. A miracle that I have experienced or witnessed was... A miracle I have experienced or witnessed was... And if you're telling somebody about that, you could conclude with, it just had to be God.
The second one was a miracle that I have experienced or witnessed. You know, it just had to be God. Okay, third idea, number three. This, again, is a phrase, and I'm going to leave it open-ended, and you complete the, the sentence. Number three, I feel God's presence when... I feel God's presence when I... Okay, number four. Number four, again, a phrase, and you complete the sentence. I have seen God's hand in the circumstances when... I have seen God's hand in the circumstances when... You know, I could have filled up this sermon time by telling you my answers to these four things. But I didn't because if you are going to share the good news, if you are going to talk to somebody else about your faith and about Jesus, it has to be your words. It has to be your experiences. You can't just say, oh, my, my minister said blah, blah, blah. Now, occasionally you can do that. Oh, she told the greatest story, and, and you can tell it. But, but that's not as meaningful. And the other thing is you have to look for openings. Sometimes people are walking down the street like they were for Charles. But sometimes it's somebody where you're in a waiting room, and you all strike up a conversation. Sometimes it might be at the grocery store. Sometimes it might be on the phone. Sometimes it might even be texting or email. You have the opportunity to help God find the lost sheep. Use your words to tell others the good news. Now notice, I hadn't been saying, so you can invite people to Beth Page. Now, is inviting people to Beth Page a good thing? Absolutely. The main way that people get connected with a church is because somebody invited them. So I am not minimizing inviting people to church. That is important because we want them to know the risen Lord for their quality of life and for their assurance after death. But we also want them to know, even if they never step foot in this church, that there's a better way to live, that there is more meaning out there in life than just trying to get ahead or just trying to climb the ladder of success, or just filling your time with entertainment. Now, 
The reason that I went over these ideas and that Charles wrote the skits is to give you, the people of Bethpage, tools that you might have, that you might use when God puts opportunities in your life to tell. Telling the whole message of life today and tomorrow. This is our charge as Christ's disciples. May we live up to our call. Amen and amen. I invite you to stand and let us sing together, I love you, Lord. We're going to sing it through twice. Heather, did you get that? We're going to do it twice. remain standing and let us say what we believe using the affirmation that's found on the screen. The basis of faith is desire. The beginning of faith is commitment. The heartbeat of faith is trust. The privilege of faith is sharing. The beauty of faith is acceptance. The hope of faith is belief in God. The joy of faith is the peace of God. The reward of faith is the presence of God. The focus of faith is the Son of God. With all diligence, therefore, we will keep the faith by which we are kept through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus all around his neighborhood he tells them God is able to make their house a home he wants to win his world for Christ but he can't do it alone but each one can reach one is unchanging go into all the world share the love of Jesus far away or door to door you see just like someone told you that Jesus loves you so you must tell someone who will tell someone until the Savior, then together. 
to you with thankful hearts and in joyous praise. As we give of our money and resources, we surrender our whole being to you in worship and adoration. Lord, may this offering extend to the work of your kingdom in your church, your community, and into the beautiful world which you have made. Amen. You may be seated. God of the ages, in your sight nations rise and fall and pass through times of peril. O oh Lord, our land is troubled. We need your wisdom. O oh Lord, lift, lift us up, particularly those who are powerless and poor for those who feel they have nowhere to turn. O oh Lord, we ask that you would send your peace. We think of the turmoil in Afghanistan. We pray for those who were injured or who lost loved ones or homes in the earthquake. Oh, Lord, it seems such a troubled land, and now this earthquake has brought so much misery. Oh, Lord, we pray for those in Ukraine. The bombing has been so intense. Cities have fallen. People have died. We ask that you would... Give the people in power tools to bring about a more peaceful solution. Help the killing to stop. Oh Lord, we pray for those who grieve across the ocean and here at home. We pray for Brandon Barrier's family. We ask that you would send your comfort and your peace. We pray 
your presence to be with Billy as he faces a biopsy this week. Oh, Lord, help them to figure out just what's going on. Oh, Lord, we pray for Sherry and her family as they travel across the country. Give them a safe drive and a safe travels. Help it not to be too arduous. Oh, Lord, we pray your healing on Linda Van Pelt, and we ask that you be with Carrie and Reed and all of those who are helping her. Help it not to hurt too much and help this healing time to go quickly. Oh, Lord, we thank you for worship, for the freedom to worship you. We pray this day for those who do not believe in you, for those who do not know you, for those who will hear the good news from us or from someone else this week. We pray that as seeds are planted, that your spirit would water them and nourish them, that faith may blossom where there was none before. O oh Lord, help us to trust you, to be with us, to guide us, to show us your way. Hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing together, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. One more time. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Thank you, Guy, for your help in this worship service. And, oh, Lord, help us not to wait until tomorrow. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forevermore. Amen. Charles. <laughs>